raising the IQ and bankrolls of sports bettors everywhere. The Better IQ Podcast is your source for sports betting information, analysis, and opinions. Learn. Bet. Win. Better IQ. Hey, good afternoon and welcome to the Better IQ Podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lang. We're going to talk some boxing, we'll talk some MMA, and we're also going to talk some college basketball. A plethora of topics here for this afternoon, and we'll do so with our guest, uh, Brandon uh, Whitmire. So let's welcome in. Brandon, how are you? Hey, Andrew. Doing uh, real, real well. Uh, had a great weekend in uh, some hoops, and uh, it was exciting uh, with the boxing. Um, although it didn't go my way, it was uh, certainly nice to have boxing back in the spotlight. Yeah, couldn't help but notice on the uh, recap page uh, this past uh, weekend, Brandon uh, banking 10 units of profit in one day in uh, college basketball. That's uh, got to be one of the best days we've had. Uh, or a handicapper's had at Better IQ in uh, college hoops this uh, season. We'll talk about college hoops for tonight's card. Got a good one here, Brandon. But let's kind of circle back. And I know, obviously, you know, we've had you on the podcast before, a big MMA guy, uh, also uh, following uh, boxing, and was kind of curious to hear your thoughts and opinions on the Wilder Fury fight. And again, I, I don't really follow boxing all that close, but something of that magnitude, you can't help uh, but kind of read the uh, recap and the thoughts and uh, opinions. And uh, it, it's almost getting worse here for Wilder as he's circling back now and the uh, the excuses that are coming out. It was the costume that he came out on the, on, uh, to the ring with. And now today, uh, injuries in camp that were, went unpublished. Uh, ankles, not a very good look here, uh, Brandon. And, and one thing, perhaps it's, you know, again, I don't follow it all that closely. The one thing I respect about MMA is number one, guys lose more frequently. Um, and when guys do lose, they don't come out and say they got their butt kicked, but they, you know, there seems to be a little bit more acceptance, a little bit more tip of the cap to the opponent. You don't see that as much in boxing. It's almost like boxing when a guy loses, uh, they open up the Rolodex of excuses. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, Wilder calling for uh, the trilogy. He wants to fight uh, Fury again. But uh, thoughts on the match or the, the bout and, and go back. And, and really, uh, you got to give Fury a ton of credit because he came with a little different look and uh, dominated from the uh, the opening bell. What were your thoughts? Yeah, you know, initially, just many, many months ago, um, I leaned Fury. We know Tyson Fury is the, the more technical, uh, more experienced boxer. Uh, but Wilder has the punch power. And then when you're handicapping these fights, just leading up to the event, you're watching fight interviews, you're listening to, to some of the um, analysts that you may respect, you're reading articles uh, about what's what's going on in their camp. And, you know, Wilder mentioned things were going on in Fury's camp, that maybe his head was gone, they changed his trainer, um, you know, many, many things of that nature, and that he was going to change his style. He was 35 pounds uh, heavier than he was in the first bout. Um, so a lot of concerns were in the Wilder or in the uh, Fury camp. So I took a small stab on Wilder and, and I thought he was going to be able to knock him out. But uh, when you're handicapping these things, you have to kind of read in between the lines. And Fury said, I'm going to knock you out. But usually when a technical fighter with not a lot of power says these type of things, it's more of just a ploy to say, you know, here's what I'm going to do. But inside of their mind, they'd have a whole nother game plan. Um, but that wasn't the case. He said, I'm going to knock you out. And he knocked him out. So um, in this case, Tyson Fury did what he said he was going to do. I thought it was, again, more of a ploy to confuse Wilder. But he went right through him. Uh, he's certainly the, the more skilled boxer. And then now we we hear uh, Wilder was hurt, this and that, yada, yada, yada. But um, from a handicapping perspective, you got to just read between the lines. And, you know, it's like poker. Is he bluffing or what does he think that I have or what does he think that I think he has? You know, it's that level. There's so many different levels to the to the fight game, to a poker game and even to the handicapping game. And then from our point of view, just how to read exactly exactly what the heck is really really going on so i certainly misjudged that one um and in the third fight certainly fury's going to be a bigger favorite because he's uh he certainly outclassed him for seven rounds and then put him away 
Yeah, we saw Wilder uh, up to not a ton of money, but he closed like a dollar, you know, thirty, thirty-five. I saw a couple places that were obviously loaded up on uh, on Wilder that were showing uh, one fifty. La- last thing, uh, Brandon, you know, look, there, there's a number of different, uh, you know, things you could kind of point to. What do you think, in your opinion, was the number one determining factor in the outcome? Was it Wilder in the weight gain? Was it Wilder? Uh, and, and some of these kind of, in my opinion, BS excuses. Was it, uh, you know, Fury changing, uh, you know, trainers? Um, you know, what, wh- what, in your opinion, was the decide, you know, the the X factor, as we'll call it, in uh, in Fury being able to really dominate the uh, the bout? Well, they've now what fought nineteen rounds, and Fury's won uh, maybe seventeen of the nineteen, maybe even eighteen of the nineteen. Be- besides those two knockdowns in the in the first fight, so uh, it's just. Tyson Fury's on another level. Deontay Wilder got exposed. He's not a boxer. He's a power puncher. He's an entertainment kind of highlight reel. He cannot box, though. So this could be the end of him. I I don't really know. He certainly has a little bit of heart, but Fury is just the better boxer, and it it clearly – uh, showed Saturday as Wilder was certainly, certainly exposed. And uh, he's going to have to go back to the drawing board. Yeah, if you're a purist, I, I agree with you. Just the, the technical aspect of boxing, the people on the outside, myself included, you don't really necessarily know, appreciate, whatever. Uh, but you mentioned, I, I like that breakdown there in terms of the uh, you know how many rounds they fought and how many rounds that Fury has uh, won. And it's been extremely, uh, extremely uh, lopsided. Before we get to a college hoops, I uh, got to talk about MMA. Uh, anything take place last weekend? What do we got in the rise? Seems like every single weekend here, uh, Brandon, we have some sort of some of them smaller than uh, than others, uh, but some sort of MMA event. What's going on in uh, UFC now? Yeah, it's almost a, uh, a weekly occurrence now that I'm handicapping every single event here. Um, last week, I'll just I'll just recap. There was a, a great card in New Zealand, which is is almost becoming the hub besides Las Vegas on MMA. So many great fighters over there, and we had a great main event with Dan Hooker, um, who that's uh, that's his country, New Zealand, against uh, Paul Felder, and it was just two really really good tough fighters. It was. It, it was so close. It could have went either way. Uh, my heart kind of breaks for Paul Felder. He lost a split decision, which I thought he, I had him winning three rounds to two. But I, I can't complain if anybody gave the fight to Hooker. It was that close of a fight. Um, but from a betting angle, there was really no opportunities there. We did have a nice um, win on Jimmy Crute as a plus 110 underdog. And Kai Cara France last week, who is another New Zealand fighter um, winning. So 2-0 last week, which was nice. And then this week, we're going to look forward to um, Benavides versus Figueroa. That's the main event, little small ESPN Plus card again here this Saturday. Um, I'll be getting into that. But again, yeah, mixed martial arts almost every single week. So a lot of opportunities coming up. Yeah, be sure to uh, check out that uh, Buy Bix page on BetterIQ.com, particularly on Fridays. That's going to be uh, when uh, Brandon posts any of his uh, UFC MMA uh, selections. Uh, Brandon, before we let you go, I know you got a couple of uh, college basketball games you want to uh, discuss. And let's start first uh, in the uh, SEC. Two teams uh, that, to me, kind of have that bet on feel here. Uh, you know, Texas A&M continues to overachieve. I mean, Buzz Williams, if he's not, I know there's other examples out there, but if this guy isn't in the running uh, for college basketball coach of the year, not just SEC coach of the year, college basketball coach of the year, I don't think people understand the lack of talent. I don't think they understand the roster that was handed uh, to Buzz Williams. And to be able to be as competitive as Texas A&M has been, it's been one of the more shocking uh, performances of any team in college of basketball. They're playing host to Kentucky, and I, I've watched Kentucky the last couple games. Uh, they're starting to get it, and, and it seems like it happens each and every uh, year, and they have so many good, positive things they can do, but what makes Kentucky uh, even more dangerous, uh, Brandon, is uh, of late, uh, they're starting to knock down some outside shots, and if they can hit threes, they don't need to hit them at 38%. This is a team that if they hit them at 34 35%, Obviously going to be a dangerous out there uh, come uh, tournament time. So uh, got Kentucky laying six, a couple of six-and-a-halves here as they head to College Station, 129-and-a-half the total. 
Yeah, I think that number seems about right. Um, but I took some six and a half and some seven uh, last night with Texas A&M. Uh, Buzz Williams, like you mentioned, is is doing the finest coping coaching job that I've seen in a long time. Ten and four against the spread uh, in the conference play. Like you said, with this um, abysmal roster, I think they only have two guys in double figures. So very, very um, not a talented team. But I've been making money with them. I had them against Mississippi State plus four, Alabama plus 11, Georgia plus um, one. And they've won outright as three uh, outright underdog wins the last three games. So I'm just going to go ahead and just stick with what's working. Um, I back coaches and I love Buzz Williams. We certainly know Kentucky has all the talent. um, But I think the markets are starting to catch up here. And this may be the last spot I'm going to take. A&M because, um, you know, it is Kentucky. This could be a little bit higher, I think, but um, I think the odds makers are on. So I took a little six and a half here and you may be able to get Kentucky coming off, uh, you know, that that win against Florida, that win against LSU, some of the upper echelon of the uh, SEC and maybe maybe hopefully get them sleeping tonight. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and roll what's been working and take Texas A&M here. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't know him. I'm not friends with him. I, I I know I'm tooting his horn, but I'll 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 go on record and say this right now: if you take Mrs. or uh, Texas A&M's roster with a different coach, just any run of the mill coach in the Ohio Valley Conference, they finish below 500 in the Ohio Valley. I'm that that's the level of talent currently at a Texas A&M, and yet here they are. Uh, at uh, at eight and six in SEC yeah, play, I mean it's it kind of re- kind of reminds me of what you know maybe not to the gr- to the degree what Buzz Williams doing, but what Mick Cronin's kind of doing with UCLA. Exactly. You know, I, although they have talent, but Steve Alford certainly is not uh, the, the greatest coach. Um, but what Mick Cronin's doing reminds me of what Buzz Williams doing here in the uh, SEC. Yeah, there's certain guys, uh, there's certain guys, and, and I you know again. The, I'm harping on college coaches, but there's certain guys, it doesn't matter. I wrote an article about this. It doesn't matter where Mick Cronin goes. It doesn't matter where Buzz Williams go. Those guys, they just they know how to win. And, and the best part about it, they're, they're similar in the respect of they get these kind of kids with chips on their shoulder, kids that were overlooked by some of the bigger schools. And more importantly, these kids – they run through a brick wall for their coach. And there's some teams that I, you know, Florida is a good example where I, I don't think some of the Florida kids respect Mike White. Uh, oh, yeah. Mike White is, I think he's got to be on his way out soon. They've been underachieving for years. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it took some time at UCLA and maybe not the entire team. Uh, you know, no doubt there's probably some guys at UCLA that Cronin would love to get rid of so he can get in his own own type of players but it's it's not by accident that Mick Cronin who had no ties really to the west coast that I know of uh, was in Cincinnati for years and just shows up and has that team playing competitive basketball in the same with uh, Buzz Williams let's not uh, forget Buzz Williams was at Virginia Tech Virginia Tech had little to no pedigree in terms of basketball it's a football school and what he was able to do uh, in Blacksburg was uh, was remarkable. So, um, all right, we're talking too much about coaches, but let's uh, let's move down the car. Mississippi, uh, I believe last time out, what they give up over a hundred. That's not a good sign there uh, for a team that it kind of found itself prior to that performance. Brandon on the uh, defensive, uh, and I know Kermit Davis usually pretty good about game planning, mixing up uh, defenses. Didn't work uh, last time out. They head to Auburn. Auburn coming off a, a much needed uh, victory here. Uh, they had a little bit of a, a swoon. They're laying eight and a half, total of 142, Brandon. Yeah, we saw Miss, Mississippi. We thought they were kind of turning on the uh, the Jets or whatever it was when they beat South Carolina, Florida, and Mississippi State. And then they lose to Kentucky. No shame there. Lose on, on the road to um, – Missouri, not really any shame there. That was probably a pick game, give or take. But getting blown out by Alabama is kind of a bad sign. But again, I am a Kermit Davis believer. Um, and I think, it, you know, it's more of a fade, honestly, Andrew, against Auburn. Because, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of money betting against Auburn this year. And, and Ken Palm's got them ranked 38th. But all they do is just keep winning. And they go on these crazy runs at the end of the games. And we saw the LSU game and, and whatnot a couple of weeks ago. Um, but it's clearly in this spot just a numbers position here. I think uh, eight and a half, nine is a little bit too much. It's basically just uh, respecting, again, another good head coach and um, fading an Auburn team that I think is uh, certainly very lucky and overrated. Although they'll certainly probably win the game. But I think Kermit Davis, um, his team's all always play hard so i'm hoping they keep it in within the uh, number of eight and a half 
Kansas State at uh, Baylor. How does Baylor respond to the uh, loss to uh, Kansas? To me, just another game. You know, it, was, it was a great, it was a competitive uh, game. I, I don't think Baylor's pouting. Uh, I, I think Baylor, and really, when you take a step back, granted, it's you know the price is still pretty rich, uh, but the perfect elixir here is a Kansas State team that is not very good here, Brandon, at 9 and 18. So uh, how are we approaching this one with Baylor yeah. laying 14, total 124? Yeah, very, just is very simple. Just this is an approach I've used for years. You just look at the uh, ATS records. Kansas State eleven and sixteen ATS, and Baylor seventeen and nine ATS. Kind of just buying low, selling high, taking those extra points. Um, but it, there's a couple other variables that have to kind of match up. Has to be a, a, a good coach, um, some field goal percentage, and a little other things I won't get too much into. But um, it's again basically buy low, sell high. I took the fourteen with kansas state hopefully baylor can uh, you know they're, they're one of the best teams second defensively uh 21st offensively in the uh, ken palm rating scott true has his best team here maybe a final four team but hopefully maybe this could be a little bit of a letdown spot and uh you know kansas state they yeah they are what they are but they play hard they have a good you know they're halfway decent on defense and um I'm a Bruce Weber fan, and you know he gets his teams ready to play, even though on on such a such a down year for this program. I'll, I'll say this: I haven't done it often, but I, I'd have to go back in my records. I think I bet Kansas State two or three times. I think I've won all three. Just kind of stepping in when when these teams are are you know struggling as much as they are, you just can't view them as well. You know, you mentioned their ATS record. Well, this is no good. This team's no good. We can't bet on because they have a losing ATS record. That's obviously a, a very flawed uh, argument. I look at it more say, hey, I'm not actively looking to bet on this team, but you can find spots. In fact, I go back and we'll talk about them. You know, Kansas State was in a, a, a ripe spot a few weeks back against Oklahoma came out and, and got that uh, victory so certainly uh, capable of uh, sticking around how about uh, Oklahoma they're at home uh, they desperately need a marquee of victory tonight as they play host to Texas Tech you got Texas Tech laying two here Brandon 138 and a half the total yeah just another one of a little um, angle I've played over the years it hasn't been as strong over the last five years and if there is a home underdog revenge um, spot in in sports that still works to today. I think it's only college basketball. And when Texas Tech beat them, um, I believe a few weeks ago, or, or give or take, uh, 69 to 61. And it's basically you, you're getting, you know, I got them at uh, three earlier this morning. Um, I still recommend Oklahoma in this spot. Again, it's kind of like their backs up against the wall. It's it's either this is the game or, you know, this will probably be the last time I, I bet them. But again, another good coach that I really, really respect, Lon Kruger. But I'm always weary fading Texas Tech because Chris Beard is just, you know, a top three three coach. And these teams just – his teams play so well on the defensive end. But it's a home underdog revenge angle with a, with a very um, stable team here. Maybe not, not so much as of late losing three in a row, but um, statistically they're uh, – they're pretty good and a little bit average. But I went with Oklahoma and just played the home underdog role here, getting the three or two or two and a half, give or take. Last game here, Brandon. Uh, Tulsa, a team that I know you've uh, followed very closely here. And remember, they got off to that 7-1 and one, uh, start. And uh, I, I give them credit. You know, after that loss at home to UConn, that was off the win against Wichita State. Expected letdown situation. Then they go on the road, lose to UCF. They've since won three of four. Uh, granted, the loss wasn't very good at Houston, 76-43. to 43. This team's got flaws. But looking ahead at the uh, schedule, you know, they really only have one, maybe two marquee victories, and they're playing three lower-tier AAC teams before they have to travel to Wichita State. These all three of these, Tulane, UCF, Temple, if – if Tulsa wants to get in the NCAA tournament, these are absolute must-win games, and it starts tonight against the uh, Green Wave. You got Tulsa laying ten here, Brandon, uh, one thirty-two and a half the total. Yeah, I went ahead and, and I passed on this game, but uh, it's a very s- similar situation to kind of the Auburn um, Old Miss game that we, we discussed earlier, uh, where I think Tulsa is a little bit overrated, ten and four in conference, and Frank Haith has done a phenomenal job um, in in a, in a tougher. Um, 
AAC this year. But uh, I'm looking to, to back Tulane here. Um, if I had to bet it, um, if it, if it moves up a little bit, maybe later today, I'll take maybe 11 if it gets there. I doubt it. But recent wins against SMU and UCF is um, pretty good for a, a bad, uh, bottom of the road team here in the AAC. And I really like Ron Hunter. You know, it's just a what he's done in the first year, uh, four and eleven, nothing great, but twelve and fifteen overall. Maybe in a couple of years he can turn this, uh, you know, two lane program over. Where you know a guy like Mike, you know, the great Mike Dunleavy uh, Sr. couldn't even couldn't even do that. So he's they're playing respectable. I'll say that, and uh, it's more of a fade on Tulsa because I think they're a little bit overrated. Yeah, two lane last year, four and twenty seven. So, I mean, if there's ever an example of why you shouldn't hire, and I shouldn't say that, Musselman, I know he was an NBA coach, but some of these retread guys that are just looking for a payday, um, you know, it, it, it's look, the difference between Musselman and Dunleavy was Dunleavy was tasked with the job, Brandon. He needed to rebuild the program, and that doesn't involve just X's and O's, that involves recruiting. Uh, glad handing with boosters, things like that. Musselman walks into a situation where uh, the infrastructure is already there. All he needs to do is go out and, and get some talent and, and coach up the uh, the kids. He doesn't need to worry about all that other stuff. So, uh, yes, Ron Hunter, a significant uh, upgrade. I hope he sticks it out. And, look, um, it doesn't show necessarily not a huge increase in the wins, but they are certainly uh, better. And you mentioned, Brandon, uh, the AAC, I think, much tougher here top to bottom. Uh, this uh, season, hey, great stuff certainly. here. Go ahead, Brandon. No, I was just saying. I was just agreeing with you, saying certainly it's it's definitely a uh, stronger conference. Yeah, no real elite teams, but uh, you know, again, top to bottom, there's there's some parity. I, I like the AAC, and uh, they're a league I'll definitely keep an eye on here come uh, March uh, Madness. So, uh, great stuff, great stuff here with uh, Brandon Whitmire. Be sure to uh, check out the uh, Buy Picks page. We got plenty of NBA, plenty of uh, college uh, basketball. Uh, all the uh, selection subscriptions available. If you have any questions, reach out, support at betteriq.com, uh, and that will wrap up uh, today's uh, show. Uh, good luck here uh, tonight, and we'll be back again tomorrow.